Teen Court. And is it true that he threw pencils, pens, called you names? Teen Court. We're thinking minimal sentence, no, no jury trials. Teen Court. What were your expectations when you left your house? Hi, I'm Dylan, and Teen Court is a thing. Not just a courtroom to try teenagers, but an entire justice system made up of teenagers. The judge, teenager. The jury, teenagers. The prosecutioner, teenager. The defense attorney, teenager. And the defendant, you guessed it, teenager. Basically, the system exists as a diversion program, not a court of law. What, like make-believe trials? It's used exclusively for low-level first-time offenders who've already admitted guilt. Can you please tell us what happened in your own words? While I was eating, they pulled out the bag of marijuana and started doing stuff with it. You didn't think that was something that you should have talked to your parents about? Even though they've been around in some form or another since the late 19th century, you've probably never heard of them. There are over a thousand of them in the United States alone, and they each deal with around 150 cases per year. Putting a teenager through teen court costs the system roughly 10% of the cost of putting them through a criminal court, not to mention the fact that they're way more effective. The jury will attempt to get to the root of the offender's problem, and then they'll refer them to community service, or group counseling, or a policy letter writing or to write a personal essay about their experience. In the case of a turnstile jumper, let's call him Michael, which by the way is a weirdly jailable offense in New York City, so don't do that. The jury thought he had many positive attributes, like the fact that he didn't actually have any money to pay for the subway fare, though he didn't actually ask any of his friends for money. But it was a definite plus that he had college plans and he thought the transit company deserved an apology. Also, he was a huge fan of Biggie Smalls, which they thought was pretty cool. After some debate, they sentenced him to group counseling and to write a letter of apology to the transit company. Oh, and they also thought it was pretty rad that he played handball after school. I do basketball, track, and I'm on the debate team. It's obviously a much better approach than subjecting low-level offending teenagers to the terrifying American justice system. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! It's proven to decrease their one-year recidivism by half, whereas sending kids to a juvenile detention facility only increases their chances of committing a much more serious crime, dropping out of high school and returning to adult prison in a terrible, terrible circle. While Seinfeld's pilot may have been the only time someone's been sentenced to be someone else's butler, or Bart and Homer the only ones to be sentenced to be tied together, people have been sentenced by normal adult courtrooms to some pretty unusual punishments. In 2012, a woman in Cleveland, Ohio was sentenced to hold a sign at a busy intersection for two days during rush hour reading, only an idiot would drive on the sidewalk to avoid a school bus. In 2009, after a six-year-old boy's mother received a ticket for failing to buckle up her son, who she explained repeatedly refused to do so, the judge sentenced her and her son to a session in traffic school. There are tons of lists on the internet detailing wacky judicial punishments, but this next one is especially interesting because it uses animals as punishment, rather than, like we'll see soon, our history of punishing animals. On Christmas Eve in 2003, a man and a woman defaced a nativity scene, and before serving 45 days in jail, the judge ordered them to walk around town with a donkey holding a sign reading, sorry for the jackass offense. Only 100 years prior to social welfare leader William Reuben George founding the George Jr. Republic, the world's first self-governed youth center, the origins of teen court, animal court was being phased out. The earliest recorded animal trial was of a pig in 1266 in Paris, which resulted in its execution. Animal court is weird. Animal defendants appeared before churches and courts defended by real lawyers facing real charges ranging from criminal damage to murder. There were real witnesses like in real court and in many ways it was real court, at least by their standards. And if the defendant was found guilty they would be exiled or executed or worse. The defendants, the animals, would sometimes even be dressed up in human clothes, as with the case of a pig in 1396 who was charged with ripping the arms and face off a child. <laughs> Sorry. The pig was said it's to be maimed, mangled, and hung in the public square next to all the other humans. <laughs> How do you hang a pig? It's so violent. And then there's the case of the mule who was burned alive because he was inclined to kick. Though in 1750, a donkey was acquitted of charges of bestiality when last minute character witnesses came forward to detail the animal's virtue and good nature. Though the very human co-accused was still executed. 
I guess jail time is what they're already used to. There were two types of animal trials that were very similar to our own criminal and civil trials. There were capital punishments inflicted by secular tribunals for pigs, cattle, horses, mules as a punishment for homicide. Also, the reason for all the pig murder is probably because they were allowed to just run loose in the streets with all them tasty kids. And the other type of animal court is the ecclesiastical court, which is mostly against rats, weevils, and mice for doing rat, weevil, and mice things, like eating crops. The ecclesiastical cases earned many lawyers a good reputation because they had to use every trick in the book to try and defend their accused vermin. And I'll see in court, sweet tits. Including claiming that it was impossible for all rats to respond to a summons, as they were very spread out and didn't have a central communication system. Also, their mortal enemies, the cats, were everywhere, making travel very difficult. I'm serious. This all happened. They also claimed that rats were one of God's creations, doing God's will, and thus weren't committing crimes. However, the Inger Beetle wasn't so lucky as it was determined that it wasn't on Noah's Ark, and therefore wasn't one of God's creations, and was thus a criminal. And while all this seems insane, it's sort of just nostalgia. Nostalgia for a time when they tried witches, and vampires, and werewolves, and inanimate objects, but that's a whole other video. While animal trials seem completely irrelevant today, the questions they bring aren't. Should we be treating animals with more respect and trying to understand and see from their perspective rather than simply imposing our will onto them? Animal court isn't a far gone idea. Not only was there a dog who was called as a murder witness in France in 2014, but between 1992 and 2011, Switzerland had legally appointed animal defense attorneys. The lawyer would keep the animal's best intentions in mind and attempt to see from the animal's perspective as much as possible. For example, instead of just euthanizing an aggressive dog or forcing the likely abusive owner to muzzle the animal, the lawyer would argue that the dog should be placed in a loving household. Which is rather different from the farce of the medieval era, which was basically just a weird murder machine. It's not hard to draw a comparison between Swiss animal court and teen court. And while that sounds awful, maybe it's not. I'm not, I'm not saying that teens are animals. I'm not. Teen court is so effective because everybody's a teenager. They can all relate to each other and they all have a shared perspective, which is a big problem facing teenagers in adult court because no one can relate to them or understand what it's like to be a teenager. Especially since the area of the brain that governs decision making is not fully developed in teenagers. An adult can be threatened with jail time because they understand the implications of long-term punishment, but teenagers for the most part don't. Teenagers do stupid things because they're teenagers. Threatening teenagers with something they likely can't even understand the full implications of is like threatening a rat with public execution for eating your corn. Again, I'm not saying that teenagers are animals, just that everyone needs to be treated for who they are, not for who you think they are. What do you guys think? Is teen court the next phase of judicial evolution? And how crazy is animal court? If you want to learn about anything that I talked about in this video, there are links in the description. If you haven't already, be sure to click right on my face to subscribe, or at least think about it.